Buddy, welcome back. I am going to be making a lightweight jacket today, and it is going to be this one down here, which looks very similar to what the model is wearing. Kind of hard to tell because of the busy fabric. And I'm going to use a busy fabric too. Um, someone had asked me about a making a light jacket or something that they could put over their arms, you know, because how we are at our age with our arms and everything when you're wearing a sleeveless top. And I think that this will work. So I'm going to be using a special fabric. This is it. It is an embellished organza. If you can see, it's got all kinds of shinies and pretties on it. And I think that's going to be lovely. This fabric was actually given to me by my friend. Um, and she bought it in India while she was there. And I, she gave me two fabrics. The first one was that one that I made a vest out of that kept shrinking every time I ironed it. So I'm going to be very careful with this. This feels like an all polyester fabric. And um, I'm going to be treating it differently than normal because of all the embellishment and everything and sequins and little mylar pieces and everything. So I'm not going to be doing a hardcore iron on it. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of French seams because organza can be kind of rough and prickly. And since this is a sheer fabric, I don't want those seams exposed. I don't want them poking me. And so I'm going to, I'm just going to French seam just about everything. That's my plan right now, at least. And this pattern, um, looks like they have a core, a, a different fabric for the bands in the front. I haven't decided if I'm going to use a different one or not. If I am, I do have another very lightweight fabric that is this like wine color that would be an interesting contrast but I haven't decided yet so I will probably just use the same fabric knowing me. So I'm going to go ahead and get the pattern papers cut out. Um, yeah I'm doing the longer version that comes down lower. Ooh, but I'm not sure if that's a good call with all of the sequins. Hmm. No, I have just changed my mind. I am going to do the shorter version. Just because this has all of those sequins and everything, and I don't want to be sitting and rubbing all those sequins when I'm sitting down, because I think that that would wear it a lot faster down below. So, I'm going to make the cropped version. Okay, so just switching on the fly here, I will be making the shorter version of it. I think that would be better. So anyhow, let me get my pattern pieces cut out and I will be right back. So I have the pattern pieces cut out. They're big squares, you know, which are very nice for French seams. But one thing that I've just been thinking about is on this one that I'm doing now, um, they want you to put a trim on it here, the lace trim. And my fabric is so busy. You know, um, they call for two inch wide lace and I got a piece of two inch wide lace out and I put it up next to it. Um, but I think that's going to clash and I think it's going to be too much. So I am not going to be putting lace trim on here because it's so busy. If I was doing something like this, something that wasn't as wildly exciting as sequined and reflected flowers and everything like that, I probably would. So we're just going to skip that part. It's just basically sewing a strip of two inch wide lace on top of what you already have going. 
And so if you want to do that, I think that that's pretty self-explanatory in the directions. I'm hoping. So I'm going to iron my pattern to get all the wrinkles out so I can cut it out, cut out my fabric. But I want to show you something here. Um, this is my back piece and for the back they want you to cut two pieces and sew them together. Now this is this is 100% just straight on grain. There is no curve. It's not at an angle at all. And because this fabric being what it is, I don't want to make unnecessary cuts. So what I'm going to do is instead of cutting this in two pieces, I'm going to cut it as one on a fold. So um, the place that I need to put, move this over here for a second, I need to line this up so that at the position of 5 eighths of an inch in is where my fold is. So just to make it easy on myself, I'm just going to draw that line here. 5 eighths of an inch in from where that cut edge is and place that line here on the fold. Um, if this was curved, if it was at an angle, if it was anything like that, I would not be doing this. But since it's flat and I don't want to have unnecessary seams where I don't absolutely need them. I think that this is going to work out just fine. It's been a long time since I cut out sequins and I completely forgot how stiff they are. See all the sequins there? Um, and right now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, French seams with sequins could be a disaster. But you know what? We're going to go with it. And if I break a needle, I break a needle. So be it. We will continue. This little piece is supposed to be like a tiny piece of bias, a bias strip, a bias uh, tape kind of thing that's going to encase the back of the neck area. And in order to cut this on the bias, my edges, I only have... Well, wait a second. I might be able to fit it in here. Hang on. I'm going to try to wedge it in somewhere where it is not overlapping sequins. And I don't know that that's possible. So instead of that, I am just going to cut it fairly straight. I'm going to go like that. It'll have a bit of a tweak to it, but not too much. Um, I think that that's going to be okay. It's the back neckline. If it doesn't want to completely curve and it has a little bit of a wrinkle there with all of the busyness going on on the outside of the jacket, I don't think anyone will notice. So sometimes you just do the best you can do and that is the best I can do with this piece. Okay, so I think I have a game plan for my seams. I put white thread on my serger and so what I'm doing is I am going to put my sides, well I did this backwards here, okay. So I need to put my sides right side together, okay, so pretend this is the thing, and serge my seam. Just, you know, trimming the very edge of my seam off with my serger, you know. And then, because that's going to give it a nice little edge, then I can take that serge seam, turn it wrong sides together, so I've done that, turn it wrong sides together, and with my regular sewing machine, make a straight line of stitching just inside of it, okay? I want to do this with the serger because it's going to contain all of these little organza stuff, you know, and give me a really nice defined edge, okay? And so then, once that is done, I turn it right side out again, and I have a nice, neat, French seam inside and everything looks lovely. Just wanted to show you today we are bringing back the lovely Miss Juliet, the little 99 from the 1920s. I think she's 1923, I don't remember. But I do love her. She's one of my sweethearts that is my own, not for sale because she's my favorite. Um, and then of course, a serger. You know, utilitarian, very practical, but not quite as beautiful as the lovely Miss Juliet. So to get started here, the first thing that they're going to want us to do 
is to sew together the two back pieces. Well, since I cut mine on a fold instead of as two, I'm just going to check that off the list right quick. And so then I need to get my little neck binding piece. And there are notches and things on here, but I'm actually going to uh, press it in half first before I mark anything. So go to my ironing board and lengthwise I'm just going to fold it and press everything. Now I'm probably going to mark this pattern a little bit differently than I usually do because what I usually do is use my heat erasable pen for a lot of things. Um, but this is, it's organza, so when I draw on it, it goes all the way through to the table and everything like that. Um, so I'm just going to mark it as I go and just keep my pattern pieces handy. There's not a whole lot to mark. So like right here, instead of clipping my notches, because I just don't want to on this fabric, I just drew where that notch is and it goes through to the other side because it's basically like a mesh, you know. And so up here on the edge of my little strip that I just ironed in half, which grew because I did cut it on the bias, um, I'm just going to center my little piece there and draw a couple little lines right there. Okay, so that's going to match up to my notches. So, um, move this out of the way here. So looking at the right side of my fabric, and the difference between the right side and the wrong side is you can see mirrors on the right side, okay? I'm going to put the raw edge of my little strip up here, matching those notches carefully. And because it's kind of on a bias, and I can tell you it is stretching, I'm able to make it fit to this curve. So I'm just going to kind of bend the neckline over. It is stormy out, so that's just thunder out there. Okay. Once I have it all pinned, I am going to do a row of stitching at 3 eighths of an inch right here. Okay, so the directions now say trim seam, clip curves, and overstitch in their very commanding way. So to trim my seam, I'm going to use pinking shears because I can. And I'm trimming it to about a quarter inch. Not a whole lot because this is a very tiny little facing. It's only maybe a quarter inch wide. So it, it's basically a bias tape is what it is. But we'll humor them. So we have it trimmed. Now they say to clip it also. I don't know that I really need to clip it. Um, but what I need to do is they want you to understitch it. So I am going to iron this first and I need to press the seam allowance. I'm looking at the wrong side here now. Pressing the seam allowance up towards that band like this. Now the instructions just say understitch. And looking at it here, it looks like they intend for you to leave it upright. That cannot be. No, way over here at step number 10, it looks like it is folded over. But it looks like they don't want you to turn it all the way under until a future step. So that makes sense. So I'm going to be leaving this upright, but not forever. Eventually it will be turned under like this. But for right now, what I'm going to do is come back and make an understitching stitch over here, or right about there, which is going to go through my band and the seam allowance underneath it. Okay, so putting the back piece aside, and just like before, I'm going to worry about marking this as I go. Um, what I'm getting is the front pieces and we are going to be putting a narrow hem down the front of each front piece. So let me just take one at a time here. I'm going to put a little pin on the side that the hem goes on because both sides look very similar here in case I get it messed up. Okay. All right, so this is my wrong side here. And I think what I'm going to do for a narrow hem is fold it in and press it at about 5 eighths of an inch 
all the way down just to get that crease there first. Now that I have it pressed in about 5 8 of an inch, I am going to come back and fold and tuck in that raw edge, or as raw as it can be with all of this embellishment here. So I end up with about a quarter inch hem and I will just edge stitch it along the fold line all the way up and down here. Okay, so I have my front um, openings all hemmed up. Lovely. And now it's time to sew these fronts to my back. And so since I'm doing French seams, I'm doing what's going to feel very backwards, but I'm going to be putting my fronts right side down. So this is the wrong side. See no shinies there. And I'm going to go get my back piece and put it right side up. And I should be able to match the edge of this hem on my front with the edge of that little band that we put to the back neck here like that. The back over here, the, the shoulders, I'm going to match those edges up. I have not transferred over where the notches are, but I'm hoping everything will just line up. And it does. So I am going to get this pinned and then like I said my process is going to be I'm going to serge it just barely trimming off maybe an eighth of an inch um, as I serge it straight down. I'm going to do that for both sides first. Do you see what I just did? I pinned my back on the wrong way. That's okay. That's all right. What I'm doing is I, I didn't notice until after I serged it and I looked down. I was like oh crap. So I'm just taking my serging off, you know, and I can re-stitch it after that, but these things happen. And see, I, what happens is after this, I was opening it up to press everything open, and I realized, wait a minute, one side has shinies and one side does not. So let me fix all of that, um, re-serge it, and then once I serge it, I will be doing just like I did here where I open it up and press it so that that serging is um, nice and flat. Just push it to one side or the other. It doesn't really matter which side you choose. Okay, so now that I have it serged correctly with both of the right sides here, my serge seam on top, now I need to fold it wrong sides together and carefully pin it at this serged seam line here and I got a bunch of bulk where all of that sequin stuff comes together right there. Um, then I'm going to sew on my regular sewing machine a approximately 3 8 inch seam allowance so the stitching is right here on the outside of where that serging is encapsulated. Okay, and understanding that we are skipping all of the lace stuff, you know, because that would be in the instructions right now. This is what uh, my seams look like. That is the outside. That's the inside. Nice little French seam. Um, I have this seam pressed towards the back and I am debating because it looks like in the instructions they actually want you to turn this under like that. Um, but I think it looks okay this way. At this point though, I'm kind of wishing I had done this a little bit differently in the very back um, because I think I'm going to leave it open like this instead of turning it under. I have that pinked edge of this fabric peeking out and I'm concerned that that little pinked edge of organza is just going to poke in the back of my neck and drive me crazy. But on the other hand, if I turn it, I'm going to have sequins poking me in the back of the neck. Will that be worse? I have made an executive decision. I'm going to leave it this way. After I wear it for a while, if I find it's a problem, I'll do something different. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it like this because I think I would rather have some organza poking me than the edges of sequins poking me. And that is my final decision on that. So now that that is done, I need to get my sleeves together. Um, and the sleeves are again, big rectangles. But before I can sew them on, I need to mark where they're going to go. And like I said, I'm just gonna keep my pattern pieces handy here. So this is my big sleeve. 
All right, so it has a center dot, which is going to line up with the shoulder seam, and a lower dot to match up with the lower one, and a middle dot. All kinds of dots. What I'm going to do is, um, I know on this, the center, or the shoulder seam is that center one. So I'm just going to draw that on here. And again, it goes all the way through because it's basically mesh. And then down here, I'm going to mark where the lower dot is, which is basically at 5, 8, 7 inch in. So that's not a big surprise down there. Okay. And then on my, my kimono jacket, I am just going to mark that lower dot because the middle one here, it's going to figure itself out. And I'm being a little, a little lackadaisical about it because um, it's not laying completely flat because of all the embroidery and because of the um, embellishment and everything and it being just a a embellished organza so if I can get the lower dot and the shoulder to line up I'm gonna call that good not worry too much about making sure this dot is exactly on point okay so I've got these marked I'm gonna go ahead and get my sleeve piece and it's like a trapezoid kind of thing so the longer side is what gets sewn onto my jacket. And also, for what it's worth, I do not see a difference between the front and the back on this. I'm going to fold it in half really quick just to make sure if I can get all of my pins out. So if I fold it at that shoulder seam, yeah, it's exactly the same on the front and the back. So that makes it easier for keeping everything straight. Now I'm going to be sewing these just like I did the other one where I'm putting the wrong sides together first. Okay. Okay. So just like for the shoulder seams, I surged it and I pressed it open and now I'm going to fold it right sides together, matching up that top seam and sew this at three eighths of an inch straight across. Okay. So here is my sleeve and I have my whole French seam allowance pressed out towards the the sleeve that just makes this whole little intersection lay flatter so now what I need to do is this underarm area here uh, let me clip my little surging thread off and I'm going to um, in so doing this with a standard seam it just come in pivot come down because I'm going to be surging it, mine's going to be slightly more curved here in the middle. So when I'm surging, I will start up here and I'll surge down and basically open this up as flat as I can. So when I get to this point, I will just continue surging all the way down here. Okay. And I am doing this again with both of the right sides on the outside. Okay. So after surging, I went back and just like everything else, folded it the opposite way and stitched it at about 3 8 7 inch. So at this point, the only thing left to do with this lovely little very dramatic jacket is to make narrow hems. So I am just going to work on the bottom edge first. I'm going to do just like I did at this edge here where I fold it up and press it at about 5 8 7 inch and then tuck it in and stitch it along the fold line. And I'm going to do the same thing at the sleeves, okay, because they are just straight stitched too. Okay, so here she is. You know, this was a super fast and super easy project. Let me see if I can bring her in closer so you can see all the little detail here. And doing the French seams I think was a good idea, um, especially for a fabric as problematic and itchy as organza can be. You know, having everything encased all the way around. I think that that's lovely. So yeah, it's a very simple pattern. It's a basic kimono. Let me zoom out a bit here. 
It's a basic kimono jacket pattern. And if you weren't using a fabric, you know, as, as finicky as this, you could just use standard seams, you know, finish off your, your edges however you're going to. I would serge them, obviously. Um, and it won't take very long. I mean, it's squares. So I think this would be a very good beginner project or a very quick project. But what I like about using it with a pattern as busy and as fabulous as this fabric is that when you have, or at least for me, when I have a, a fabric that is this ornate, I want the pattern on the fabric to be the eye grabber. I don't want the lines of the sewing to be, you know? And I think that this is simple enough and drapey enough that it's gonna serve that purpose. It's gonna be able to cover up my arms, you know? So anyway, let me go ahead and try it on for you. It's actually a stormy day and we are right in the middle of a couple storms, so I thought I would try to go out there, but it is raining. So I'm gonna stand here at the doorway. I think it's cute. Um, that little back part at the neck doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was going to, so I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. This is extremely lightweight. And you can see I just have it over my little camisole, but I think it is camouflage-ish enough that it would make me presentable, you know, if I was going somewhere extremely conservative dress code, something like this might help, you know, to bridge that gap between sleeveless and not. Don't know, it's up to everyone's, you know, discretion, but I like it and it's easy to move around. It's just simple squares, but that is it. I hope you liked it, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Live in my bucolic life, free every city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook them some thin, and will the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful white houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.